wonderful people welcome back to my channel tech chef africa and today on this episode we have an amazing gentleman who will be coming to talk to us about we finding our purpose you know through our career path and before that let me use this opportunity to thank you for tuning in today on our episode our guest happens to be joshua opoku ajiman who is an alumni of ghana indian kofi annan center of excellence in ict and he also happens to be um, the president of internet of things network hub in Ghana. Um, there is more about him that I know that you are really going to enjoy because he has a very inspirational story and I will just bring him in so that we dive into it, right? So stay tuned. Welcome Joshua. Okay. So guys, as they, we have Joshua here and um, I've already done the intro but he will also go ahead and tell us more about himself. But before that, right, before he mentions what he's going to cook for us today, as we already know, because of coronavirus, or even not because of coronavirus, before you cook, you need to wash your hand. So Joshua will move to the sink and wash his hand. He will come back and I'll also repeat the same thing. I'll do the same thing. Then we can start sure. Yeah, with business. So Joshua, yes. please, yeah wash your hands for us okay i'm back and as you can see we are making sure that our hands are well cleaned and as you know we are done with that so joshua quickly um tell us what you're going to cook for us today um, hello good afternoon to everyone yeah yeah my name is joshua Pokajiman. you can call me josh um, this afternoon i want to cook something special and um, what I want to cook is called omelettes. Okay. So omelettes omelet with um, fried rib plantain. Okay. Popularly known as coco. Coco. Yeah. 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 So that's what basically I'm going to cook. Mm -hmm. Omelette is a more like a vegetarian kind of meal. Oh. Only for vegetarians. Okay. So we have our fish, our eggs, and number of vegetables. Um, I like vegetables because I believe most most of the protein foods. Mm -hmm. You can find most of them in vegetables. Yeah. So it's the leaves that the animals are being fed with. Mm -hmm. So we can get some piece, piece. of protein. So <laughs> it's better you go straight to the vegetable and get the rest of the way. All right. Great. So Joshua or Josh, yeah. I call him Josh. Yeah. So um, he'll be cooking ripe plantain or fried uh, yeah, ripe plantain with omelette okay. stew or sauce for us today and he has already mentioned his ingredients so whilst joshua begins to you know chop his vegetables firstly we would want to know if anyone hears the name joshua or josh who is josh right. for short uh, but i'll just go ahead and unwrap Yes, so um, I will say Joshua or Josh or the IT evangelist as <laughs> most people know me to be. Uh, it's someone who is very obsessed with technology okay. and passionate about solving problems. Um, I'm a computer programmer. That's what I actually study for some short period. And most of my activities afterwards have been in entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. So I've been building a number of businesses for the past eight years now. Oh. Uh, so wow. Basically, that's, that's what I do. I like to solve problems and then turn them into businesses. Okay, okay, okay. So, Joshua, uh, yeah, thank you for helping me with this. Yeah, really kind. Okay, so what are you going to do first when it comes to your meal that you are preparing for us today? Because of the pepper and uh, the ginger, mm -hmm. they sort of ir irritate or itch the hands. Yeah. So that have to be last. So the <laughs> whole becomes uh -huh. concentrated with them. Uh -huh. So we can go first with either carrots, okay. tomatoes, or the green pepper. Okay. Can you help me with a small knife? Sure, please. Thank you. All right. All right. So I'm going first with the green pepper. Mm -hmm. You have to take out the part. Mm -hmm. uh, Great. Slice it. Tell us three fun facts about you, Josh. Uh, mm -hmm. Hey, Senya, what? Senya, 
now I'm home in there. Okay. What I'm a core fan mm -hmm. might be different for other people. For me, the thing that I call fun, mm -hmm. it's probably waking up every day having a big problem to solve. Okay. So that sort of challenge keep you awake every day. To okay. me, that's fun. Okay. Yeah. And the second part is uh, knowledge acquisition. Okay. So the fact that you can have one book that is about 30 years old, mm -hmm. so you can have all this wisdom collated into one book and you get to read it in a week, mm -hmm. a month. To me, that's fun. It's so amazing, like magic. Yeah. I mean, all yeah. the wisdom in the world can be downloaded in one single book and you get yeah. to read it and then have everything. Mm -hmm. To me, that's also fun. Okay. And all the technology. Okay. Anything tech to me is fun. Okay. Yeah, sure. So um, knowledge acquisition, yep. technology, problem and solving. problem solving, solving yeah. thinking and problem solving. That's interesting. Um, you've heard him. So, what was your last book that you've? Um, okay, so my. Okay, before I even answer that question, mm -hmm. uh, when Corona came, yeah, we went through a lot of psychological stress. Mm -hmm. So I gave it to another solution. <laughs> which I call Redacity. Okay. So what we do with Redacity is that we want to install into young folks the mm -hmm. habit of reading, thinking, mm -hmm. and growing rich. Okay. So because of that initiative I started, it had pushed me to read eight books every month. So wow. for the past five months, I've been reading eight books every month on the average. Wow. And my last reading, just some few days ago, was Daryl to Last by okay. Collins. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. And basically yeah. talk about how companies like Coca-Cola, IBM have been able to last for over 100 years and they're still striving. I mean, every occasion in Ghana, people want to buy Coca-Cola. Mm -hmm. What is their secret? Mm -hmm. I can hide it that a person who started a business is dead and gone. And yeah, yes, so and yes, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they would basically um, explain what makes them so great and what makes them last so long. Mm -hmm. So that was my recent book that I just finished. Okay, so out of the eight books that you've read, yeah. can you mention like three to four of them okay. so that our viewers so can? So I've also read um, The Very Good Life okay. by J.W. Rollins, the lady who wrote Harry Potter series. Okay, yeah. yeah. So he wrote, it's, it's more like a speech he gave during the reunion. Mm -hmm. it, it basically talks about her life from graduating from Harvard Mm -hmm. and then failing in life and then finding herself at the bottom of the pit mm. and then trying to come back again mm. and the reason being that what he really wanted to study was just to write he loved writing mm -hmm. but the parents didn't want that for her okay and they told her she's never going to make a living from that so she followed they strike a deal between what their parents want and what she wants, but she, yeah. he couldn't get what she actually wants. Yeah. So it ended her into a, a rat bottom, of which she felt had a broken marriage. Mm. She had a baby by then. It was really hard for her to survive. So that's where her my imagination pushed through okay. for her to start with the Harry Potter series, which we can. Yeah. Very, very yeah. She became a, a millionaire and they donated all his money back to charity and that also falls under finding your, your purpose, purpose or which, is which is our topic for exactly. today exactly. so <laughs> we'll come back to that so yeah interesting interesting and, and any other two that you would that want to one, mention the second one was the science of getting rich which was uh, written by walter d wallace joshua like hey <laughs> That book is so crazy. Yeah. So, um, is it? It's, it's very weird that we see some few people in the world who can sort of acquire everything they ever want in life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we think it's blood money or spirituality or what about the hell we think? Mm -hmm. But there's a science of becoming who they are. Yeah. And if you're able to practice that same science, practicing means that doing what they did thinking how to think, you can also become that. Yeah. It's not a rocket science. Yeah, that's so the true. Book really opened my eyes to the possibility of natural laws. So the book basically says that as we have um, force of gravity, mm -hmm. whatever you show up, yeah. it doesn't get stuck. Yeah. It down. Yeah. Have you yeah. ever wondered why yeah. it comes down? Mm. It's a natural law. So the book also says that there are laws that are, if you apply, yeah. irrespective of that's yeah. not the same um, science that God used to create the world. And God was creating the world, he never had to build it, he had to command. Yeah. Because of the power God had. And do you believe that we are all God? 
or we have yeah him yeah we have him in us so you go created us and he breathed his spirit in us it means we are we smaller are. gods yeah so whatever god did we can do same and jesus christ came to prove that yes he has a power to do that yeah so it's up to us to how far we can believe mm -hmm. how far we can also work hard to make sure whatever we desire come to pass and that's just wow. amazing what we look like wow 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 interesting um so you've heard a lot actually that's a lot of good quality information right and i know that you've picked a lot out of what he just um said do you need help with the curtain no okay well, sorry, I was i'm not helping <laughs> My mom's belly, mm -hmm. I was literally going to school because she, she was a teacher. Okay. So um, at early age, they introduced me to reading and okay. writing. Okay. But then when I went to senior high school, mm -hmm. even before I got to senior high school, I discovered what I want to do with my life. Okay. Like I find sort of my way to my purpose. Mm -hmm. And that also affected my academics. Okay. So when Dunso came... Uh, <laughs> when what came? <laughs> Please, you didn't hear this from me. It's coming oh, out of Jewish mouth. It's an yeah. Part of my life. Okay. Even though it was a terrible situation we experienced, mm. you know there are some group of people in this world. There are people who have been transformed by adversity. Yeah. And there are people who get broken by adversity. Yeah. I'm at the type that if you put me in a cage and lock me up, I will cry the cage and then bring it back to you. Okay. So I'm the type. That's that brilliant. <laughs> Adversity, I don't know where my energy and power comes from, but okay. I'll be able to transform into something new. Okay. So doing so time came, weren't having lights to work. We always spend all the day doing nothing at, mm -hmm. at the office, just sitting or sleeping. Then I discovered a book called Rich That Poor That. That was the first book I, I read when I came to Accra. But that's not my favorite. But before you continue, which year did you come to Accra? I came to Accra in 2012, right after I completed senior high school. Okay, 2012. Yeah. Interesting. So that book was the only book that to me resonated with me. Because my parents, my environment, my families, my leaders, they all thought the part I've taken, I've taken is doomed to destruction. Uh, the fact that you don't want to go to university, mm -hmm. you don't want to learn anything from school, you just want to do your own thing, seems crazy, especially yeah. when your parents are educated and they, they believe in the educational system, and yeah. Churches. yeah, so it was a very tough moment for me. So that book really resonated to me. In which I, I would really recommend to anyone who is watching right now, I totally agree with him. Try as much as you can, right? to take a percentage of your monthly income and invest it in yourself at least 10 percent of it just find something under the traffic right usually people sell that yeah, yeah. buy it just relax your your brain um with it when you're about to sleep right it wouldn't be although you might think that you're spending a lot by the end of the day you're also investing in your intellectual sure okay so josh what have we got into now? Um, so we finish um, chopping our vegetables. Mm -hmm. um, the next phase is the plantain. So what we're trying to do is that we're trying to make sure we cut all the necessary things that we need. So that mm -hmm. when we go back to the fireside, mm -hmm. while we're working on omelette, we can still be frying. So okay. we can have enough time to have more time. Okay, sure, sure, sure. So yeah. So we'll go ahead and then um, peel. Let's look at how he peels his planting how was um, um life like living um, at the village so i was born in mem in the Ahapa region okay and my parents because of their work they are into ministry mm -hmm. they were trans transferred to gambia number two okay but then i was still young so i, I didn't recall any of the memories over there mm -hmm. so from gambia we went to so from kasapin i moved mm -hmm. to um, Sinai, mm -hmm. Sinai to Accra. Okay. So my stay in Kasapen, um, I attended my primary schools and JSS and then the secondary school in Mem Sinai. High. Do you mind sharing your primary school and so Sinai school name? So primary school life, uh, my school was uh, the time that when you go into school on Monday, you have to go with pamphlets. Mm -hmm. And the reason being that there was no reference sheets. So you have to put the pamphlets 
on the roof so that you sit under the shade and learn. Wow! And when it comes to Hamatan, like season like this, you go to school with a bucket of water. So you need to dust the compound and the classroom before you can learn. So you carried the bucket of water all the way from your house? To the school. It was composed, especially if you're a junior student. If you're wow. a senior, like um, GSS3, you are free. If you have mm -hmm. class 6, you are free. From class 5 to class 1, compulsory. <laughs> Exactly. So that's how my school was like growing up. Okay. So after when I got to um, GSS, mm -hmm. um, that's where I discovered my passion earlier. Okay. I came in, into contact with a computer for the first okay. time in, in my life. Wow. In the village, there was no electricity. Mm. This computer was powered with generator. And we were using it for church service. Okay. Because my dad was a pastor, I had the opportunity to operate it for the church, mm. learn it, and get curious and wanted to learn more. So that's how my technological journey or my passion for technology started from. So once I liked it and I had so much love for it, mm -hmm. um, it started affecting my academics because my mind was always computer. So I started dropping from class. Mm started running away from class to friends to, to fix their computers. I learned how to fix them. Wow. I started fixing for the people who have it in the village. So by the time we had electricity and people started buying it. The mm -hmm. first people started buying the computers in the village were the DJs. Because they were using it for funeral Funerals, and other yeah. So they'll come to me and I'll fix it whenever there's issue. Okay. So um, I went to the secondary school. I took the same passion to secondary school. I was supposed to go study science, mm -hmm. which I actually studied. But then the, the first question they asked me was, where's your bleeding bottom? <laughs> <laughs> Can you repeat that again, please? The first question they asked me at the administration was, hey, mommy. Yeah. I was born a bleeding bottom away. <laughs> Because I, I was very, very young, like, um, I was very young, 14, I was very, very young. I didn't have much um, flesh on the body. Even though I was old, I looked very, very young. And, you know, I still I can't was, get over it. <laughs> Mommy, I now over the feeling, uh, feeding bottle, bottle where you from? Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, uh, that, that's how young I was when I was in the secondary school. Um, I go to a time, they will, they will carry me on their shoulders across the dormitories to dining hall. I, I was the youngest oh my goodness. in the school. Wow. And it was very interesting, like so funny. Everybody wanted to, to be my school father. So I ended up becoming the school father of the senior prophets. Wow. Yeah, so I spent um, two terms with them before they, they graduated, before I moved to my actual dorm. Wow. Yeah. So wow. that's, that's most of my beginning of school life. Mm -hmm. When I became a senior, mm -hmm. um, I stopped going to class. Because I, <laughs> could, I could spend most of my time in the dormitory. You know, being a junior cry, you are missing class. <laughs> and you turning into your seniors here. Oh my goodness, that one day. And we were the first batch to um, attend the four years. Uh, mm. Under the uh, Kofo yeah. administration. administration, yeah. yeah so yeah. I spent four years on campus. Mm -hmm. And my first year, I, I learned. Second, third, fourth, I invented my own course. Because <laughs> I wanted to study ICT at that time as a whole program, wow. of which we didn't have. So we, I did science, but then um, I also took a computer to school in the dormitory. And the reason why I was able to do that was the fact that didn't that create any exactly. sense of it, 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 it was supposed to be but because of entertainment entertainment professor was allowed to, <laughs> to keep a computer in the dormitory <laughs> so he became my best friend wow i, I moved from my dormitory to his, his room hmm. so he gets to use my computer for entertainment and i get to spend all my life over there in the dormitory wow so that's how i come wow. up to do that Wow. And on campus too, I started making money. I will copy music for you, copy games for you, software for you. And Charlie. Making money. So I, I actually started making money at a very young age. So that was your first business? Well, to me, to it was present. fun. I didn't know it was even business. business. I didn't know what, it, what to call. I mean, I just bought the team. Somebody come, Charlie, can you bear me CD? I know how to buy the CD. Can you bear me CD? Yeah, so, the vibe. <laughs> I 
know how to buy the CD, so mm -hmm. I know there's a false element, so they were also ready to pay. Yeah. Because when they go to town, the big guys will charge big. Mm. For me, I take small and then I do for them. Those who had MP3 to come for music, I copy for them. Mm. So when you come to my chalk boss, okay. you'll find a CD bag okay. with a lot of uh, CD. That's, uh, is it the compact desk? Compact desk. Okay. Okay. So you find a number of CD bags in, in my trunk. You find a standard hard drive. You find memory card. You have screw drivers. Mm -hmm. Aside my provisions, books was the least. I I never bought a book <laughs> at secondary school. School. So it, at times it fascinated me. What, how come I am building a library now? Mm -hmm. Back then, all what was in my mind was computer, mm -hmm. and that's the only thing mm -hmm. that makes sense. To me back then. So, w w what was your first programming language you okay. you learned, and at what year? Okay. So, uh, my first programming language was C programming in 2012. Okay. okay. And 2012 was when I came to Accra. So, I came to Accra before I saw the other side of technology. Back in the village, what I saw was hardware. Somebody's okay. machine breaks down, you fix it. Somebody needs a new operating system installed, you install for the person. Somebody mm. needs app installed, you install apps and copy stuff. Mm. That's all I could do okay. by then. Okay. But when okay. I came to Accra, okay. and what brought me to Accra had to do with the fact that um, I didn't perform well in my secondary school exams because okay. of my bad habits in quotes. So, <laughs> before you continue, what's your advice to anyone who is watching? <laughs> Based on what you, you, you just said. Well, for me, I will be honest with anybody watching. You, see, you should know yourself and what yeah. you love. Yeah. So whatever you want to do is what you're going to spend the rest of your life doing. Yeah. So you better make sure you're doing the right thing. Yeah. Or but anyways, don't run. Don't run from class. Oh, you, you don't. 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 <laughs> don't. You know, you can actually do this. Just go to class. Um, exactly. Listen, okay. right? For me, um, I would say um, it will be smart if you can uh, marry the two together yeah. so yeah. you work on your academics it's still up to what you want in life for me it was nothing about certificates about school it was about i have this thing it can do this for me and that's all matters to me so to summarize everything okay. um you've said you've mentioned or you yeah you've mentioned how some um, roles or job opportunity needs you to be uh, certified right. in some specific areas. Right. And um, also, you've talked about your journey from your hometown, um, how you started the schools you've been to, how you identified your passion for computer, right, right. or computers. But you um, turning out to even start your business out of that so this actually bring us into our topic identifying your purpose or finding your purpose through your career path as a youth right so now that he's done as you can see he's done with his plantain he's done with his eggs so we'll just move to the cooking stove then we'll continue from there yeah Joshua, which face? Um, so the face here is where we put them on fire. Okay. So the rib plantain, we're going to do deep frying. Okay. And then with the omelette, we're going to do shallow. Okay. Yeah. So once it heats up, we can um, put them inside. Okay. So with the omelette, because um, it seems to be a lot, we can divide it into two batches. Okay. Go the first one, or we can go all together, all um, together. depending. Yeah. Yeah. The sauce so is, is, is yeah. quite a bit, yeah. It's quite a bit. Okay, so um, to summarize everything you said earlier, um, we were basically 
getting to a we got to a point whereby you um realized that you found your purpose or you realized you identified your purpose in terms of knowing that you are really passionate about computer and you really want to explore your wings in there so speaking of which um Please, I am not cooking for him. No, you're not. You, you just I'm just helping him. So you handle the, the fried, and I'll handle the omelets. of the right plantain, and he will tell me when to move it out. Yeah. So Joshua. Epa. How? Four. Yeah, just just quickly um, send us back to before you came to Accra. Okay. What drove you all the way from your hometown to Accra? To, come to Accra. Yeah. Um, my first uh, motivator was the fact that my parents didn't like what I was doing. Okay. Not not like they they hated it. They just wanted me to go to school to be to do what I'm doing. Okay. And I thought. But what I'm doing, I don't need to go to school to, to do it. I can learn mostly on my own. Mm -hmm. um, but they also thought I have to have a secured, more like a security, that you, you have a certification mm -hmm. with the skills and you can always get a job. Mm -hmm. They did not understand my entrepreneurial uh, mindset from okay. at a young age. So I didn't do well in the secondary school. Mm -hmm. Of which, due to that, they, they registered NOVDEC before I even noticed that I have been registered for NOVDEC. Hey! So, I mean, they saw my academic Seriously? performance every, every semester, every time. Mm -hmm. My results would go to them, and I was last by 20 in my class. Wow! Yeah, so they knew I wasn't performing well, and they knew the causes of it. Just that they couldn't sort of persuade me mm -hmm. to do what they want, because I, I had already made my mind. Okay. So that um, NOVDEC that I re they registered for me, mm -hmm. Um, took me to Sunyai because Sunyai was the original capital by then, back in 2011. Of Ghana? Yeah. Okay. Brown Afro. Before the new regions, we, mm -hmm. we used to have a Brown Afro mm -hmm. for all the Afro and then the other divisions. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I came to Sunyai to um, write my end of deck. Mm -hmm. So that's where I met, I would say, my savior okay. or my angel or my guardian. So somebody mm -hmm. who saw who I really am. Mm -hmm. of which I didn't even know who I am, mm -hmm. and told me that you are very good at this, you need to go to Accra mm -hmm. and take this course okay. and it will help you. So the person asked me if I, I, I am interested, I told him I, I am, and okay. then from there I came to Accra. So this wow. person happens to be um, a man who has a school, of which when I came to Sunyai I was teaching in his school. Okay. So whilst I was teaching, I told the son that I could fix computers. <laughs> So I carry my computer to, to the school where I was wow. teaching to as well. So the, the man also gave me one room, very big one, mm -hmm. and gave me, brought all the computers that I was poor for years mm -hmm. from the ICT lab to the room. And I told him we'll have to buy a couple of parts or components mm -hmm. to fix it. Mm -hmm. He drove me all the way to Kumase okay. to purchase them, came back to um, Sunyai, Sunyai. and I was able to fix a number of them for them to get back to work. So after doing that, he really believed I was very good and he saw what it was in me. Mm -hmm. So from there, I came to, yeah, I would need it. From there, I came to Accra, 2012 general. Okay. So when I came to Accra, um, we went to Kofianai, mm -hmm. Kofianai ICT Center mm -hmm. at Ridge. That's where I, I studied programming. Okay. So when I went there, I Which was, was that? Um, 2012. 2012. I was 18, yeah, heading towards my 19th years. Mm -hmm. And uh, we went to the administration, they asked what I want to do, mm -hmm. and I told them I want to learn how to build my own software. Oh, wow. So they told me I have to do a course, by then called Foundation in Software Development, okay. FSD. And after I finished, I did DBC, which is Diploma in Business Computing. Mm -hmm. So these two program or course that I did um, lasted for nine months in total. Okay. And after nine months, um, I met my partner at, at the same school. He also studied um, Cisco, okay. Cisco Certified Networking. So we met, we, we partnered, and then we started our first company called okay. Personet. Yeah. Personet. Yeah. Okay. Great. 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 So through all this, you were able to identify your purpose. And
And that brings me to the topic of today. Can we get a slide? Yeah, okay, sure. sure. So, um, purpose. Purpose. Oh, yeah. What is purpose? Purpose. Yeah, what exactly. is purpose? So, um, what is purpose? from what I think, um, purpose could also mean the same as performance, which could also means the same as uh, meaning in life. Mm -hmm. So, nature in its uh, or her infinite wisdom. Mm -hmm. So, when I say nature, I mean God or nature, or whatever you believe yeah. in. Yeah. So, in, in, in God's infinite wisdom, made everything perfect. Okay. So before God created a man on earth, mm -hmm. God assigned a purpose to that man. Mm -hmm. So it's our responsibility as man or human mm -hmm. to first find our purpose, understand our purpose, mm -hmm. and live our purpose. Okay. That's the more reason why God puts every man on earth. But unfortunately, most of us don't get to fulfill our purpose or live our purpose before we leave the earth. Um, mm -hmm. So, on the journey to finding your purpose, um, there are other things you also have to know, which I call thyself. Thyself? <laughs> know thyself? Exactly. Okay. So, with thyself, you have to know yourself, mm -hmm. you have to understand yourself, mm -hmm. you have to understand the world. Okay. So, knowing yourself sometimes is pretty easy but how do you understand yourself, understand yourself and understand, understand the world yeah. that, that is um, another level of complexity that every human being has to figure out and i believe that's why we're on earth we're on earth to figure out who we are mm -hmm. what we have in us so mm -hmm. if i say um what we have in us could be what kind of gifts and talent god gave us okay. what is god expected us to use those gifts for mm -hmm. and understanding how we can use it to make impact in the world okay um According to Gandhi, he said, uh, we, lose, we, we find ourselves in the service of others. So mm -hmm. uh, let, me, let me put it this way. In order for you to find yourself, you have to lose yourself serving people. people. Yeah. So the more you serve people, the more you are of service to people, the yeah. more you identify the true character of yourself, yeah. your abilities and gifts which you never knew New. you had. Yeah. So through yeah. service, you get yeah. to find yourself. Okay. And Finding your purpose have um, four dimensions, okay. of which you have to have a balance. A balance could probably be an intercession. So we're looking at your passion, mm -hmm. your profession, mm -hmm. your vocation, mm -hmm. and your mission. Okay. So when you put this, I'll break oh. it down. So th this is a short formula. Let's, Anybody let's watching? Sure get, exactly. So you mentioned you need to know your passion. Okay, no. Um, you need to, for finding your purpose, purpose. You have to know thyself. thyself. You have to understand thyself. Understand thyself. You have to live thyself. Live thyself. If you're able to do these three, mm -hmm. you'll be able to fulfill your purpose. Okay. And in doing so, and in doing so, you have to identify your passion. Okay. You have to identify your profession. Okay. You have to identify your vocation. Okay. And you have to identify your vision. Okay. So we'll go into details how to find all these four I mentioned. So when you find intersection between finding your purpose. Um, understanding your purpose and living your purpose and purpose um, basically means finding fulfillment in life or finding meaning to life so in order to find your purpose you also have to work on yourself which is thyself and with thyself you have to know yourself you have to understand yourself and you have to understand the world after you're done the formula for finding purpose in life is purpose or performance or meaning is equal to your passion plus your profession plus your vocation plus your mission. When you find intercession in this four, that's where you find your purpose. Now we're going to take it one at a time. Before you can find your passion, your profession, your vocation, and your mission, there are four questions you have to ask yourself. The first question is, what do I love or what 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 do I deeply love to do? That's the first question everybody have to ask his or herself to find the purpose. The second question you have to also ask is that, what am I really good at? Because whatever area you want to work or whatever field you want to fulfill in life, you have to be the best. If you want to be a cook, you have to be one of the best cook. If you want to be a painter, you have to be one of the best painter. There's, there's not like, a halfway. You have to either do it or you're not doing. Yeah. If you want to really live your purpose. 
So first of all, you find what you deeply love, what or what you you deeply love to do. And then you find, you ask yourself, why? What do you really um, are good at? Then the third one will be, what are you are you going to be paid for? And then the fourth one is what the world needs. So when you ask yourself all these four questions and you're able to answer all these four, what you love, you deeply love, what you're really good at, what the world is ready to pay for, mm -hmm. and what the world needs, mm -hmm. then you are on your way to finding your passion. Okay. So the formula for finding your passion or how you get to find your passion is knowing what you really love or deeply loved and what you're really good at. Mm -hmm. So when you find these two, the intersection of these two gives you your passion. So I if somebody is saying, ah, I can't find my passion, I don't know my passion, it's something we, we mostly say. Mm -hmm. So for you to be able to know your passion, you have to know what you deeply love. It's not just a shadow love, yeah. deep one. <laughs> so you're deeply in love with, if, if you're in love with something, this is what happened. How to find something you deeply in love with. When you love with something, you go crazy. Yeah. 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 So people fall in love and they go crazy. So that, that's the kind of love, either in relationship, in business, in acts, in every sphere of life, or in business too as well, or entrepreneurship, you have to find what you deeply loved because it's that love that drives you to yeah. achieve whatever you want to do. Yeah. You have to know what you're very good at because you have to be one of the best in any space you want to work. So are those two different? Yeah, they're different. You're deeply in, in love, love with. with the yeah. reason being that you might be in love with a number of things, but okay. be best at something. Okay. So you can love cooking, love singing, love painting, love writing, mm -hmm. but you can be best at one or yeah. two. Yeah. So you have to know what you're best at and what you're, you really love in love with. Then the third one is what the world, or, no, what you're going to be paid for. Yeah. So you can be in love with something that nobody really wants. Yeah. So that means if you go straight to that, you be in love, mm -hmm. you you be best at it, mm -hmm. but nobody is willing to pay cash for it. And how do you make sure that you position yourself into um, 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 a space whereby whatever that you love to do and whatever that you are passionate about, people are ready to pay for that service. We'll get to that. Okay. So once we have the formula for passion, which is what you deeply love and what you, you're good at, mm -hmm. it means you find your passion. Okay. The next thing is finding your profession. Okay. So your profession is what you're good at and what you're going to be paid for. Okay. So you can be good at painting and you ask yourself, are people going to pay for the painting? Mm -hmm. If people are going to pay for the painting, it means you have a profession. Mm -hmm. If you want to be a bank manager, are you good at what it takes to be a bank manager? Mm -hmm. Really good. And are people going to pay for that service of being a bank manager? Mm -hmm. If you find that um, intercession, at that place so you, you find your profession. Okay. The next one is vocation. Okay. So vocation is what you're really good at mm -hmm. plus what the world needs. Okay. So you might be okay. good at something that the world needs. Okay. And when you find an intercession in that, you find a vocation. Vocation could be your work or your job. Okay. And that's what you're going to spend the rest of your life doing. Okay. So you go yeah. on passion. Yeah. And then the last one is a mission. So mission is what you really loved or deeply loved and what the world needs. Mm. So most NGOs or most organizations force like non-for-profit organization falls within this range. Mm -hmm. So those who have found what they really love to do mm -hmm. and what the world needs end up helping humanity. Okay. So these are the philanthropists, the non-governmental, non-for-profit, mm -hmm. they fall in that missionary state. Okay. Now, after you find your passion, your mission, mm -hmm your profession mm -hmm. and a vocation mm -hmm. um, we're going to dive into the blend of these two so okay. your passion plus let's say your mission, mission will give you a sense of fulfillment like you feel okay. like i'm really making impact, impact but you'll be broke so you see people who are really we see people who are really passionate but they are very very broke or they might not have money but they have the energy they have the love and they are doing the work very well mm -hmm. with their heart. You could see that this person is pouring all their heart into it mm -hmm. for charitable causes, mm -hmm. but they don't have money yeah. or they are not worthy. Wow, this is looking good. Your food, oh can, my goodness. Can, can you please turn it off? 
I should turn it yes, off. Yes, please. Okay. So that is um, the blend of passion with mission. So in blend passion with profession, you will make a lot of money. You can be rich, a billionaire, okay. Okay. but then you might not find sense of fulfillment. So you feel like, oh, I have money, I have the luxuries, but you don't feel happy. Yeah. Because yeah. you find what you love, you find the money, yeah. but you're not finding what the world needs. Yes. You're not making impact in the lives of people. So you feel empty. Mm -hmm. Then when you uh, marry your vocation with your profession, you'll be very good at something. You have so much money. Mm -hmm. You can afford all the lessons in this world, mm -hmm. but then you feel like there's no love in it. In it. Yeah, you always feel like, feel like there's I'm making more money, but I, yeah, my yeah, heart is not in, but still yeah. you're making money, you're living yeah. well, but yeah. your heart is still not yeah. there. So these are the complexities in life. So in order to make sure that you have money, you have what you love, you're making impact, you have a job that you're going to do for the rest of your life, you leave the earth. Because if you're passionate and you find a purpose, even after 60, you still work. Work, yeah. It means you, you, you love what you're doing, it's giving you income, you're making impact in the life of people, and you have something, like you can, just can't live without it. Yeah. So that means you find your purpose. Okay. So this is the formula for finding your purpose. Your mission plus your vocation plus your passion plus your profession, find the session of it gives you a, a sense of fulfillment okay. in life. Yeah. So after finding your purpose, what is next? How do you make sure that your purpose that you've identified is also coming of value to any room or anyone who finds themselves okay. around you. Okay. Yeah. So now that we've understand the dynamics yeah. involved in finding a purpose, yeah. now comes the hard work. <laughs> I mean, that's where most people give up. I know, right? Because now you understand, you've gotten to know, you're getting to understand. Mm -hmm. Now, to me, that's why I think um, the self coming. Now you have to. Now you know yourself, you know your weakness, you know what you love, you know what you're best at, yeah. you know what the world needs, you know what to be paid for. Yeah. Now you have to put in the work. Yeah. So putting in the work, that's where you might have, you have to have self-control, determination, mm -hmm. perseverance, mm -hmm. discipline, mm -hmm. all this come into play. Okay. So um, I think that's where we, we really have to do a lot in everybody's, in every sphere of our life. Mm -hmm. Because if you fall short of it, you give up. Yeah. If you give up, you must settle for either two of the combination or one of the combination. But yes, you exactly, <laughs> <laughs> you either go for either passion okay. and probably um, pro uh, profession. So you have money, you love what you're doing, but you're not making impact in the life of people. Yeah. Or you can go for missionary and passion, mm -hmm. but finding a balance is, is the toughest, and that's I believe is what every human being on earth has to do. And how, not not everybody gets to, to to do that. How did you bridge that gap in finding? A balance. That's right. Maybe uh, viewers are interested in knowing because I know that at this point in life, someone is really facing this challenge yeah. right now. They are at this point and they don't know whom to talk to. That's right. So if the person is watching us right now, kindly look through the camera and tell them what worked for you. Maybe it wouldn't be the same formula that yeah. would work for them, but they could pick something out of what you are going to tell them, then they begin to execute. That's yeah. right. So um, from me, uh, my perspective, I think we might have to take it off. Um, I started first with a passion. That's, that's what I started with my life. My early life was a passion. So I was passionate about computers, I was passionate about solving problems, and that's why I started first. I think it's a journey. Okay. You have to do it to, to relieve the edge. Okay. If you're fortunate or if you work so hard, mm -hmm. you might be able to find your purpose, leave your purpose before you leave the edge. Because okay. our time to an edge is limited. So yeah. the earlier you start this journey, the earlier you get to your destination mm -hmm. before you, you, you leave the edge. Mm -hmm. So for me, um, the computers I started with was my passion. Okay. Along the way, I have to find ways to make money. Mm -hmm. I remember my mom would say, you don't pay light bill in the house. Who won't pay light bill? Uh -huh. And so, obi ba, obi bana ye mana. Uh -huh. uh -huh. that time, it wasn't about money. It was about the passion I had. Yeah. So now, I started thinking about making money. Mm -hmm. So making money is where I blend what I love, what I'm best at, mm -hmm. with what will be paid for. Mm -hmm. So that, I was able to make money. Now, coming to Accra, um, starting Personet, it was purely for money. It was a profit-making business. Okay. So from day one, 
our, our goal was to make money. So I had a passion and I had a company that was making money. Mm -hmm. But then as we ran for like four years, mm -hmm. I feel like I was empty, I was lonely, always in the cubicle with a computer, programming. I was poor in communication, leadership. There was so much I didn't even know I could have in me. Mm -hmm. So that gave up to IoT Network Hub. So wow. IoT Network Hub, starting it, we made it purely not for profits. Okay. So it's, it's more like an NGO. NGO. And through my service to people, losing myself in the service of others, mm -hmm. I get to find myself. So, yeah. now, I now realize I'm a very good communicator, which I never knew. I'm introvert. I shy so much. But now I, I don't feel shy again. You it's see? true. <laughs> so um, it's a journey. Yeah. But you have to make your mind that you are ready or you are willing to, mm -hmm. to take that journey. Mm -hmm. For me, I don't think I've find my purpose yet. I'm okay. still on a journey. Okay. So I mentioned a series of them. Yeah. I'll be able to take up my passion. Mm -hmm. I've taken care of my profession. Mm -hmm. Taking care of my provocation, mm -hmm. vocation. Now I'm also taking care of my mission. Okay. But they're all in the early stage. I have to put them together, hold them together, and push to leave the earth. Okay. If I'm able to hold on and keep pushing mm -hmm. to leave the earth, mm -hmm. I would say I'll fulfill, I'll, I have a sense of performance, okay. or I've achieved my purpose, okay. or I'll find meaning in life. Because IoT Network Hub is an organization that is making impact in the life of people for free. Yeah. Our meetups for the past four years is free. Our activities are free, the people we train are free. And changing people's life, it brings happiness to us, yeah. it brings us energy, yeah. it brings us a drive, it gives us hope to pursue bigger problems mm -hmm. and, and solve them. Mm -hmm. So when Corona came, because of what we've been able to build as a community, mm -hmm. we were able to fight Corona by coming up with innovative solutions. Mm -hmm. This wouldn't have been possible mm -hmm. if I haven't lost myself in the service of others. So bringing people together, solving problems, they're also helping them build their life. And that, we we'll say blessing, mm -hmm. there's a manifold of them also coming back coming to me back to, you, to yes. help me find happiness and joy in what I do in life. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a journey. So first of all, you need to find what you love, find what you can survive on. You can't just live for love. You need yeah. to make money. <laughs> you have to pay the bills. Yeah. So once you find that too as well, you have to find a work that if you don't get paid, you still mm -hmm. do for the rest of your life. Yeah. You're not looking like 60 years. Look at the rest of your life. What job are you going to be doing? Mm -hmm. If you find that, you find your vocation. Okay. Then you find a mission. With all the passion, the money, and then the um, jobs you find, how can you also affect the life of people positively around? around. If you're able to achieve that too, in addition, mm -hmm. you're on your journey to purpose. Wow. So if you're able to keep it up. So the, the whole idea is you don't give up. You don't quit. Till you, end, you leave the earth. Mm -hmm. The moment you quit one of them, you say, I'm no more making impact again. I'm focusing on money. Mm -hmm. You're losing your purpose. Mm -hmm. So basically, um, and that's, that's the whole journey. And that's, 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 that's it. Yeah. So I also have a last question. How about someone who is cur uh, currently working for an institution or a company? Now, some people just to earn the money, get the money to pay their sure, bills. Their bills and yeah. For someone like that who hasn't yet found his or her purpose in the organization, per what you are saying, how can they transition from that vacuum that they are yeah, in right now sure. to identify their purpose whilst they keep to enjoy the work they are doing? That's right. And what do you also recommend? Does it mean that if that person still, whatever um, tips that you've given, the person um, executes them through a process and at a certain phase, he or she doesn't still find his or her purpose through the career path that That's right. he or she has taken. Does it mean that it is about time that you need to step out of the company that you are working with or step out from where you are and reposition yourself to identify okay. your uh, purpose? I think that's a very interesting question. Um, I don't think you need to leave your job because okay. having a job is one of the pillars of finding your purpose. Mm -hmm. However, if the job you are doing you have passion for it, then it's also a plus. Mm -hmm. If you're just doing it for the cash, there's no love, mm -hmm. and you just have to go to work because you're gonna get paid. Mm -hmm. It means you fulfilled one pillar of it. You need to work on yourself. Mm -hmm. So uh, you don't necessarily have to quit a job. It's you personally that you have to work yourself. So you work for your company for eight hours, and you have 24 hours in a day. So you have let's say 16 hours left right mm -hmm. so the 16 hours what are you going to do with the 16 hours mm -hmm. you work for only eight hours for the money what do you do with the 16 hours so that's where your self-development comes in so if you haven't found your passion then you have to start asking yourself 
what do I love most and what do I do best? Once able to work on these two, now you find your passion. You're still working at a company, which is your profession, and you find your passion in addition. Mm -hmm. Now, after you've added your passion mm -hmm. to the money you're making, the next thing is, how do you find your vocation? What job would you want to do for the rest of your life, even after the pension? Because mm -hmm. the whole idea is not to come home and sleep after pension. Yeah. You still have to keep the body active. So that job that will keep you active for the rest of your life mm -hmm. is your vocation, yeah. which you also have to find by going back to yourself, asking yourself these questions. And when you find it, then the last stage will be, how can I also impact the life of others? Okay. This, I don't think you, it matters whether you're an entrepreneur or you're a corporate entity <laughs> or individual. It's something about you doing what will make you happy mm -hmm. or what will make you fulfilled, like leaving a legacy behind. It might not necessarily have to be building a whole hospital for a community. Yeah. It could be picking somebody and giving the knowledge you have with. Or you have opportunity sharing with others. Mm -hmm. Or you have some wisdom that you can help others, mentoring people. These are all ways you can do. So it doesn't necessarily mean you have to leave your job. You yeah. can be at the same job, make the money all right, but try to build up the other part of your life which is missing. If you're able to do all that, you'll be able to find your purpose. Great! And as he said, and there is a saying that the best way to become a master at whatever that you do is to pass on what you've learned right. to the next generation. Yeah. Um, at this point, Joshua has um, a live IoT live demo to show us so that you get to also uh, and you get to also like learn from what he does, watch um, what he has been able to produce or build um, through his work life when he started IoT work. So yeah, we'll just go straight to the demo phase. So Josh, just send us into Okay, the so um, what you see here, the bulb and then the wires, mm -hmm. is um, a real life application of IoT. Okay. So this concept is what is coming to our home. So we are looking at a concept called smart home. Okay. So you can have a smart kitchen mm -hmm. where the moment you open the door, your light comes on, your phone comes on. Yeah. And when your gas is running low, whilst you're cooking, you get to monitor on your phone. Mm -hmm. So these are all IoT and this is a basic um, setup we built for um, demonstration and for um, events. Only so, your tech chef. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, what we have here, it's a smart home mm -hmm. and what it does is that um, let's say you went to vote mm -hmm. and the key was so long that you went there in the morning and then it's still 8 p.m. you're still there mm. it, that shouldn't happen yeah but let's assume that happened and your house is dark you have a compound house all your eyes are light are dark there's nobody to turn it on for you yeah you can just pick your phone if you have the system installed in your home and when the button click you'll be able to turn on your light. Wow. The same way, let's say you travel outside your, the country or even outside home for mm -hmm. some weeks. Yeah. So this is what happened. And when it's on, you see the status updating. Yeah. So it means the power is on. You can see power reading. Yeah. You can see voltage. Yeah. You can, these are the, the power reading from the device. Yeah. And you can see yeah. current. So this bulb, as it's on, is consuming 0 0.07 ampere. No, 0 0.08 0 .08. So ampere. what this means is that if you iron for one hour, mm -hmm. you'll be able to know how much energy you spend ironing for one hour. Wow. And we are hoping to take you to the next level where you can tell in cash how much money you spend mm -hmm. ironing. So mm -hmm. you could say you iron for one hour and it costs you one city or two city. So these are what we can do when you collect enough data with mm -hmm. the sensors. So we have the sensors here. Okay. You have the power sensor, current sensor, collecting the data from the board of which you'll be able to connect other devices to it. So mm -hmm. before we were able to program this to achieve what we did, we connected it to a board. Okay. So this board connects to the computer. Mm -hmm. You write a C programming okay. and send the instruction to the board. Other four, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So Josh, do justice for now that you are now about to say. We'll have to say a word of prayer. Quiet. If you don't mind. 
Okay, I think also when serving you. Serving you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Into your so you and Sam. Oh, yeah, yeah. We have a cat. We have a cat. All right. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this meal. We so pray that you bless it, sanctify it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Right. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my God, for the sake of the camera, I can read it. And I saw the apple behind the scenes. So the empty Wow. Wow. But no idea. I've ever done this. But Josh, maybe in what you're about to become, maybe Casa. Ah. Trust me. We're going to meet. Let me meet you. Yeah, sure. Okay, oh dear. This juncture. Hmm. 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 Charlie. This is really good. I like it for the fact that the salt is less. And because he chopped the pepper, you can actually feel it whilst chewing. Eat it back. And for ripe plantain, there we all know. Actually, they're not crushed, so taste now or the same. Either they'll be brown or be show. And either of them or one or what we need to But this is good. Clock clock. Your woman is blessed. Amen. Yeah. He's good. You can try this. Uh, Please cool. look into the camera and say your last quote or motivation to anyone who is watching right now. Um, thank you all for tuning in and being with us. Um, what I will say, um, finally, will be a quote from Martin Luther King Jr. He said, a man who have nothing to live for is not fit to live. A man who have nothing to die for is not fit to live. So every human being, I believe that we are destined or God has a plan for everybody, but then it's our responsibility to figure out what it is that God has for us. And if we put all the things we discuss into play, um, I believe everybody is going to live a very blissful, happy, successful life in all areas of our life, financially, spiritually, physically, mentally, all areas of our life, we we'll all live rich. Um, so I encourage everybody to still tune in and watch the show and watch this episode over and over and over again till you grasp all the depths of knowledge and wisdom that has been shared. Mm. Thank you. Thank you so much and see you next week. Bye.